Hello guys, today we're going to be taking our emulated PlayStation 1 games from looking like this to looking like this. Cue the intro. Thanks for tuning in guys, I'm the Modern Retro Gamer and before I start I'd like to ask you guys to like the video if you find it helpful and please subscribe for more gaming related content. It's free and it goes a long way to help me grow this channel. So with that out of the way, this video is specifically just for the RetroArch settings that I use to get my PlayStation 1 games looking crispy and clean. I've linked a couple videos in the description under the steps section to help you configure your GPU if it's an NVIDIA and how to set up RetroArch from scratch, just in case you've never done that before. Okay guys, so we're gonna be using the online updater and we're gonna go to core downloader. And once that loads, we're going to go to the bottom and then we're gonna go up until we get to the Sony PlayStation and we're going to download the Swan Station Core. Duck Station, I don't believe, is available anymore for download, but that's fine because Swan Station and Duck Station are basically the same. Once that's downloaded, go down to Settings and we go into Drivers. Now down here under Video Driver, I use the Direct3D 12, but it doesn't really matter. You can use the Direct3D 11, Vulcan, um, those are those are all good choices. Then we're going to go down to the video, and we're going to go to synchronization. When you go in here, just make sure that your vertical sync, your V sync, is off. Go down to threaded video, and make sure that threaded video is on. Make sure your bilinear filtering is off. Uh, that takes some blur away. And once that's done, find your copy of Vagrant Story and click Run. Once that runs, just go back to the menu First, go down to Controls. We're going to go to Port 1 Controls, and we're going to go all the way to the bottom. Just to make sure that our right analog stick on our controller is set up, this one for the L1 button, and this one for the R1 button. What that's going to do is it takes the rotating the camera in game from your L1 and your R1 buttons and kind of modernizes it uh, with the standard now which is to use your right analog stick left and right to rotate the camera. You don't have to do that but I find it's just a nice touch. Now we're going to go down to shaders and just make sure that your video shaders, if they're off, turn them on and go down to load. Then we're going to go to shaders slang. And then we're going to go down to CRT folder. We're going to go down to CRT easy mode, the halation one. make sure that you hit apply changes and if you don't want to have to do this every time you start the game I suggest clicking on uh, save and go to save game preset once we're done there we're gonna go into the options for console settings just follow along with these just make sure that yours match what mine are. These ones I think are just pretty much all default. In the advanced settings, 
Uh, just make sure you put your CPU overclocking to 150%. You don't have to do that, but I find that it makes the frame rate better for the game and kind of makes it more smoother. The only downside to that is that you just have to be a little more precise with your chain attack combos. They just go a little bit faster. Now in the enhancement settings, uh, under GPU renderer, I use the Direct3D 11. Vulkan is a good choice as well. Turn use software renderer for readbacks to on. The internal resolution scale, I have mine set to eight and I had to play around with this a little bit. If I set it to uh, nine, it would look crazy pixelated. Um, eight looks really good. Seven looks crazy pixelated. I find you just kind of have to mess around with this a bit and see what works best for you. So just keep that in mind that uh, you you got to test that one. Under multi-sample anti-aliasing, uh, you can set that to four times SSAA. You can try eight. True color rendering, turn that to on. Scale dithering to off. Disable or disable interlacing. We want that to be turned on. Texture filtering. I prefer to use nearest neighbor. I find these filters just kind of they don't look the best. But I mean to each your own preference. But I suggest nearest neighbor myself. If you're wanting to get the exact same effect that I have, then just use nearest neighbor. Uh, the widescreen hack, you can turn that on and that allows for any 3D render games to be rendered in widescreen. There are a few uh, graphical glitches sometimes, like some of the scenes in the game weren't designed to be displayed at 16.9, so they'll show some out of bounds things that you wouldn't see with the 4-3 ratio. There are very few and far in between and it's highly recommended that you turn this on, especially for Vagrant Story. The geometry correction, turn that on. Calling correction on, texture correction on. The depth buffer, the vertex cache, and the CPU mode, those are turned off. If you have those on for this specific game for Vagrant Story, it has a lot of artifacting and kind of weird effects. However, if you want to use these settings for other games like uh, Xenogears or something like that, you may have to turn one of these on or two of these on and just leave one off. You kind of just got to mess around with it to get the best effect. But for Vagrant Story, keep these three off. The Preserve Projection Precision, I leave that to, or I turn that to on. The PGXP geometry tolerance to none. Under display settings, just make sure the aspect ratio is 16 by 9. And that's it for the options. So we're going to go down to overrides. And if you don't want to have to set those settings every single time that you start the game, I suggest that you go to the overrides and you save game overrides. This video was requested by one of my subscribers, DJ Smith. I hope this video helps you out, buddy. If anyone has any questions, be sure to throw them down in the comments below and I'll help with whatever I can. Congratulations guys on getting through this setup. Here's a showcase of what Vagrant Story should look like now. Stay solid guys and until next time, keep playing games. Thank <laughs> you.